Now then, what could you buy for £7 million? Well, if you're in the market for a new violin, that's the expected price for this one. Being auctioned in London later this month to raise money for the Japanese earthquake and tsunami relief fund. And as you pointed out earlier, Alex, you don't even get a chin rest. Not even a chin rest. Don't see a ball. <laughs> what was a kiss? Wanted to play itself for that amount of money. Well, it's called the Lady Blood. It was made in 1721, and it is one of the most valuable instruments in the world. Yes, we sent a Rani to see why, 300 years later, no one has been able to unlock the street secret, sorry, of Stradivarius. The violin is one of the world's most romantic and moving instruments, and the finest of the finest is the Stradivarius. The legend of these remarkable instruments began with Antonio Stradivari and his family, who made violins in the 17th and 18th century in Cremona in northern Italy. Each one was painstakingly handcrafted from different types of wood and finished with a secret varnish to help accentuate the sound. It's thought that only 600 still survive today, and that is one of them. That was marvellous, Peter. Really marvellous. What's it like playing a Strad? Well, it's a privilege. Uh, you really feel that you're in the presence of greatness. You know. uh, it's a little daunting because <laughs> these things are very valuable and one doesn't want to drop them. How old is the one that you've got? This is um, the Dolphus Stradivarius, which is 1727. Um, so not, not far off 300 years old, you know, pretty good. Any idea how much the one you're holding is worth? Well, it's got to be over a million, I would think, but you know, we don't like to think about that really. One man who has spent most of his life trying to recreate the magic of a Stradivarius is Christoph Gutting. What makes a great violin? You start with the wood, you start with the craftsmanship. The table, for example, made from spruce, the yeah. top is carved out first and then smoothed over. And then you do the inside. Mm -hmm. The way it moves, it, the way it flexes, that makes the violin sound. And, and experience will tell you how thick to leave it or how thin to go. You need maple um, for the back, the back and the sides and the scroll. That is mountain maple. Again, beautiful looking oh, wood. That's it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can see the markings on there. It's just yes. fantastic. This is a sound box, basically. It, it, it resonates, but you have to make it resonate to its maximum before you varnish it. What is it about the varnish? Why is it so important to the instrument? The varnish is very important because it can influence the sound greatly. How long has it taken you to perfect your varnish? Uh, about 30 years. 30 years of your life? Yeah, I'm trying to understand the basic principle recipe of the classical violin varnishes, which Stradivari had on his plate when he started to do his. Well, you say he had it on his plate, then why has no one been able to do it since? Because it was never written down. Why didn't anybody write it down? With each violin starting at around £15,000, it's still just a fraction of the price of a Stradivarius. Peter? Lovely, thank you. The magic of the Stradivari is unparalleled, but Christoph Gutting's 40-year labour of love may be the making of a future classic. Take it away, Peter. <laughs> Congratulations to uh, Christoph there, who will be one of the winners at tonight's Craft Awards. Well yeah. deserved. Now, I always thought it was Stradivarius, but they were saying Stradivarius. Stradivarius. He was Varius. Italian. Stradivarius. Stradivario. Stradivari. Okay. And, you, and you have a Stradivario, a Stradivarius uh, anecdote, <laughs> don't you? Uh, uh, well, yes. A friend of mine who was a famous uh, violinist uh, was given a violin. Somebody gave him a violin, like right. Ryan.